Last week, I did a video on cheap cars that you could buy that are going up in value. And today, I'm gonna to do the same thing for under 10,000 pounds because you guys did 1,000 likes on the last video in less than a week. Very, very nice. Thank you very much for that. I don't think it's possible, but if you wanna see the video again under 5,000 pounds, same again, 1,000 likes, and I will make that video. But listen, my nonsense, remember to subscribe if you're new here. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Am I biased about this car? Absolutely, but I couldn't in good conscience make this video without including the first generation Mazda MX-5, a modern classic already, which has absolutely jumped up in price in the past few years, particularly since I bought one back in 2019. I got my own for just £1,000 in fully working order, minus the broken rear suspension, and genuinely not too much rust, whereas now the lowest you'd find them for is around £3,500, with £10,000 getting you less and less as the years go by. This this car is inspired by British roadsters of the past and comes with a couple of engines, but I have the 1.8 litre inline 4 which makes 131 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 8.3 seconds. This car is not powerful or fast at all and was instead made to handle incredibly well, while also being a cheap route into sports car ownership. It very quickly gained popularity and today the best examples are worth a small fortune already. If you want one for investment purposes, its iconic shape needs to be as original as possible, which is hard to find considering it is so much fun to modify. Modify. Some have called the Fiat Coupe 20 valve turbo the poor man's Ferrari, but I think it deserves some respect in and of itself, as for a time prices were going up pretty rapidly. They have now calmed a bit, but I think the best examples of these will still be worth a bit of cash in future. Today you'll find them listed anywhere from around the £4,000 mark, with £10,000 getting you a 1998 model with around 70,000 miles on the clock. For that money you're getting a 2 litre turbocharged inline 5, which makes 220 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds, so it's not incredibly fast, but it's not bad and it sounds incredibly good regardless. It also looks lovely, designed on the outside by Chris Bangle, known for his BMWs, and on the inside by Pininfarina, who need no introduction. It actually caused a bit of a media frenzy on release because of its rogue stylings, and I think these stylings mixed with that turbo inline 5 have helped collectors to start restoring or garaging them with around 500 left on the roads now in the UK. Just watch out for rust on ropey examples. We really should have seen this coming, the old generations of the Golf GTI have all jumped up in price and been respected as classic cars, so when the Mark IV Golf GTI disappointed potential buyers, the new R32 range topper took its place as the Golf everyone wanted, which is the key reason why it's very well known as a future classic now. Today these are already at the top end of our price range, with £8,000 getting you into one, and 10 k never knew a 2004 model with high mileage. It came with a bigger version of VW's well tested 2.8 litre VR6, a 3.2 litre VR6 with the Haldex all wheel drive system that again had been tried and tested, but what was brand new was the DSG, VW's direct shift gearbox, which we've seen in some generations of VWs ever since, though we actually only got the manual here in the UK. That engine made 237 brake horsepower and did 0 to 60 in 6.4 seconds in manual spec of course. Everything was uprated when compared with the standard Golf, proving that boring Mark IVs could be unreal with the right formula, and the best examples will be worth a fortune in future. In the last video I spoke about the 156 GTA, so now let's take a moment to appreciate its hatchback sibling, the 147 GTA, one of the two cars that I'd personally like to add to my collection from this video. The second comes much later on, so stay tuned for that. This beautiful and very special hot hatch benefits from a GTA badge, which exists to adorn the best looking and most racy alphas, and the 147 had its own 147 GTA Cup championship to let that 3.2 litre V6 engine sing. It puts out 246 brake horsepower, it does 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds, and if you're after one that will resell in future, aim to get the Q2 diff, as that big engine up front in a front wheel drive car can make it a bit understeery, which the diff aims to help. £9,000 will get you into one, and ten grand gets you a 2004 model with 80k on it. It is actually a bit underrated given alphas with the GTA badge always end up worth a bit more cash, and I think long term we'll be looking at much higher values when they get a bit more respect. Now from this list, this one is probably the most speculative choice, the R230 SL500, which comes with a 5 litre V8 engine making 306 brake horsepower, the most on this list, which will get it to 60 in 6.1 seconds. The reason why it's speculative is that it's not the most special of its generation, it's not the most well-loved body shape of the SL class, and generally it's not crazily rare either. However, the SL class is Mercedes' most surefire class if you're after cars that are worth a fortune in future. The typical story goes the car is released and people like it, then longer term people think it looks old and boring, and then when enough have disappeared, suddenly it becomes nice again. Look at the previous 
generation as a reference for exactly that happening. And the SL500 offers the best middle ground SL for our 10k price range, starting at £5,000, with £10,000 getting you a 2003 example with 60k on it. But I would try, if possible, to go for a post-2006 facelift model to get slightly improved aesthetics, but also a better reference car, which is already worth a bunch of money, the SL65 AMG. Before we carry on the video, I have a quick question for you. If you were going to buy a car as an investment, would you prefer one that had been driven throughout its life or garaged throughout its life? I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. And by the way, quick reminder, a thousand likes make the same video under £5,000 instead. The Honda S2000 has long been known as one of the most certified future classics available within our price range, with a massive cult following around the world. It celebrates Honda's 50th anniversary as a company, taking its name from other classic Honda roasters of the past. It effectively has two generations, the AP1 and AP2, the second being a face of the first, but with a bunch of other pretty significant changes, and I think it's worth trying to get into an AP2 for our price range. You'll spend around £7,000 at bottom end to get into one, and £10,000 to get a 2006 facelift model with 100,000 miles on the clock, so pretty high. And for that money, you're getting a 2-litre inline-4 engine with VTEC, which puts out 240 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 6 seconds. It wants to rev over 7,000 RPM to get the best out of it, and what's crazy is that despite it being a popular car across its lifespan, Honda never replaced it. It's left a hole in the Honda lineup, which hasn't been filled, which has definitely helped this car's values longer term. The Audi TT ends its run this year after three generations, and the first gen has often been mentioned by classic car websites as a potential for the future, but of the first gen TT, the limited edition Quattro Sport, which came six years after the car was released, is the most desirable model, which arrived to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the first ever Quattro car. It came with a 49 kilogram weight reduction, and overall the whole car is more driver focused than the standard car. That 1.8 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine got a bit more power too, 236 brake horsepower totals to be exact, taking it from 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds, plus they start at around £9,000, with 10k getting a 2006 model with 70,000 miles on the clock. You can spot one by the two tone looks, the black roof, and then the coloured lower body section, and other than the VR6 model, this was the top of the range TT before we got the TTS and TTRS in the second generation. I think with the TT nameplate disappearing and the first gen being the one everyone asked the question around long term values, it's the Quattro Sport that's worth betting on. If you want a car that's Japanese, fun, handles well, easy to modify, and has classic potential, you would get the MX5 I mentioned at the start of this video. If you want to add fast to that list, you'd go for this, the Nissan 350Z, of which many used examples you'll find have been modified within an inch of their lives. But if you can find one that hasn't been harassed, you'd benefit from the additional long-term JDM cult following value, and I'd hazard that nice examples that haven't been turned into drift cars will be worth a bit more cash in future. This is also in part thanks to it being the fifth in a long line of Nissan Z cars, all of which have ended up being highly desirable classics at some point, and the 350Z has particularly differentiated styling, which I think sets it apart from most other cars on the market. It's the cheapest car on the list, starting at £3,000, with £10,000 getting your 2008 model with 75k on it, and you're getting a 3.5 litre V6 engine that makes 295 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5.6 seconds for that kind of money. This is one that's been on its way up in price for a while, but the Porsche Boxster 986S really is a cool car for the money, and it's the place that kicked off all the performance boxes and Caymans we've seen since. It's no secret that these used to be mad cheap, and honestly for a time, sentiment around these was not that amazing, despite them being hugely important in propelling the Porsche brand through the tough times of the mid-90s down to today. It was a car that was seen more as a poor man's entry into Porsche ownership, and though that might not be entirely unreasonable, today it stands on its own as part of Porsche history, and as the brand continues to go from strength to strength, so do prices of this little roadster, starting at around £4,500, with 10 grand getting you a 2004 model with 60k on the clock, and of course those 2000s fried egg headlights. It has a 32 litre flat 6 engine too, so not a million miles away from the 911, which makes 260 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5.5 seconds. Taking the top spot is the other car I would personally like in my collection one day, the Subaru Impreza WRX STI, specifically before the 2.5 litre engine came in. So you'd get the 2 litre Boxer 4 turbocharged engine, which produces 261 brake horsepower, and does 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, because that 2.5 litre block was known to be horrendously unreliable. I would have any of them though to be honest, genuinely the Impreza was one of my faves growing up, and like the Mazda and Nissan mentioned before, it benefits from the JDM value surplus. It's not just that though, alongside the Evo, the Scooby is one of the most iconic rally cars of all time, and was actually voted by fans as the greatest WRC car of all time.
time. Considering this road car was the win on Sunday, sell on Monday car for the brand, it still retains the WRC allure that it did in the early 2000s, and longer term I think prices will continue to rise, just as the Impreza P1 and 22B both have as well. Sadly though, it's only just available within our price range, so it will likely be a ropey one for your 10k. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did remember to hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new, massive thanks to the patrons for their support and to you guys as well for watching, and if you want to watch the previous video on this same topic under £20,000, do click up here and subscribe as well down here.